tell you, you don't really get an appreciation for how little this car is until it gets down on the ground. You can see here, especially if I come around back, not a whole lot of light, but you can see how raked the tires are. I'm pretty sure I've showed you this before. You really can't see that that well, but that's because that transverse leaf spring and it kind of grabbing the, the wheels and drawing them into the car because it wants to stay sprung, especially since I kind of rebuilt it. So I'm sure as, as the car moves and kind of settles, uh, that'll, that'll straighten out also no doors. So that's significant amount of weight there, 40 pounds or so per, per door. One of the channels that I watch, Mike's Restorations, uh, I believe is in Las Vegas. He's restoring a 1967 Porsche 911. Some, some of you comment on my videos that my attention to detail is great and all that. And this guy's definitely next, next level, well beyond me. But uh, he's doing a beautiful restoration job. But a uh, video or two ago, he did recommending a chrome plating place in Tennessee. So I'm going to take advantage of that recommendation and uh, try to send some like a bunch of extra parts obviously the hubcaps here and uh, take some pictures email them to this place and they said they'd give me a rough quote depending on what I sent them and then depending on how that comes back I'll, uh, I might send some stuff away to, to have them do some chroming for me now I have everything on the car uh, is chromed already and I took the best of the bunch but if I can get these to to send them while I don't need them and, and get them chromed and then maybe look at doing bumpers or something like that over the winter time about 16 to 18 week turnaround so it's definitely uh, something you got to plan ahead for but the driving season here is not all that long so it'll give me some extra time so anyway I'm just going to take some pictures here I do have to do some disassembly on the chrome pieces to uh, to show them actually what I'm going to send them and we'll uh, see how it goes the door handles are two pieces the push is one piece and the rest of it is another piece and it's a pretty very straightforward way of disassembly this piece here just adjusts so it hits the inside of the door and stops and then this piece here is what essentially holds the spring in so just take a 3 8 unscrew these so a little 3 8 nut with a star washer unscrew the other one and you can see that has some adjustment to it so that you can figure out how far out you want to set that and then that just comes right out of there it's got a spring to obviously spring and that's uh, that's really it so these are pretty simple but at least now it's in two pieces and I would want both pieces chrome separately I assume so got the bonnet latches here these are Dorothy's original ones I cleaned them all up and epoxy primered and epoxy primered the inside I was able to find a, a set online that were in pretty good shape so I took advantage of that and got them and that's what's on the car. So hopefully the epoxy primer doesn't matter because the ones from the black car, especially one of them is in pretty bad shape. So I'll be taking pictures of that. The, the window winds, these are from the black car, I think. Though I did, I, well, again, was able to pick some up extra. So I'm not sure how they would intend, if they would intend to get these, the knobs off or not. But they're plastic, so and it's like a, a stamped and, and you know punched and, and splayed out. In there so I don't know if or how they would get those apart and then the door operating handles we got those now the, the kicker here is this is the boot latch for the black car I believe and it's locked so with it locked you can't get that collar off and if you remember my last video that's where the pin is to pull the key out so I think I'm gonna go to town here a little bit get the drill press and just drill this lock out So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but looking at the remaining portions of the lock in there, right now that should be in the position where it's unlocked. Just comparing it to, uh, to my leftover one here and where that little dowel is that sticks out the back. So I have a feeling that this, the little, the little lock mechanism itself, the little post that kind of comes up might be stuck in there. I had a hard time getting this thing out that's just sitting in there now. So that may be it. So I got some WD-40 on there and I'm letting it soak for a little while. And uh, while that's happening, I'm going to move on to something else. So as I showed you in the last video, the spare tire didn't quite fit. Well, it, it, it probably does. What I was expecting was that 
the center post here would go through the center like it is on, on most cars. Nope, that's not the case. What this post is, it's over to the, to the right a little bit, and it actually goes into a hole where the uh, tire would mount, and it just gets held down with a simple lug nut. So we're going to adjust this a little bit here and see how nice and beautiful now that that fits. Isn't that cool? The other thing that I was missing was the cardboard cover here. Now this is an original cardboard cover. I think I got this with the black car, so this is, you know, 60 years old here. It's uh, a little bit moldy. You can see that this, this piece needs to get painted here and, and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up, but that will fit over top like that. And then you just take the lug nut here. And I don't know how good these threads are, actually. All right, well, I'm going to chase those threads. I'm not going to strip them. But then that sits like that. And then the cover. Goes over top like that. So much nicer looking, much prettier. Nice flat surface now to put stuff on in case you want to put stuff in the boot. And that's, that's how it goes. Not that other way. All right, got this ready to go. I'll paint it up. Just gonna do this side. Not gonna worry about this side at all. Leave the patina. No. Started to put the door on. It's uh, it's not going well. The uh, scratch and paint, all sorts of good stuff. So I've got it kind of sort of just sitting there right now and I, I'm gonna be done with it for tonight. And um, I'm gonna go over and try to get this, finish getting this lock out of the out of the boot latch. All right, got it apart. The, uh, that block in there that helps lock it that was definitely kind of seized up a little bit and all that gunk and crap in there so now I uh, have a bunch of pictures I'll take all this stuff I'll send the pictures to the place in Tennessee and I'll uh, see what they come back with as a ballpark figure and we'll decide how much I send so one of my viewers Joe Joe Blogs asked if I had aligned the dots on the tire properly so a lot of people probably don't realize that the tires, at least modern tires, are marked with dots. There's two colors. There's a yellow one that you can see here, and there's a red one that you can see here. They mean different things. The yellow one signifies that that is the lightest part of the tire. So due to manufacturing and consistencies and stuff like that, as the tire is made with all the steel belts and everything like that, some portion of the tire is going to end up being a little bit lighter than the other one. That's what that dot represents. The Red dot, as best as I can figure, represents where the tire is the most out of round. So, when you take your tires to a tire place to have them new tires mounted, what the person who's working the machine is supposed to take note of is where those dots are, and then properly put the wheel on in relation to those dots. So because the yellow dot represents the lightest part of the tire, the yellow dot should correspond to the heaviest part of the rim, or the wheel. So the heaviest part of the wheel is going to be where the valve stem is, at least on you know modern wheels with modern manufacturing practices. I can't really speak to the Spitfire ones if they're really that well made. And then also on modern wheels, and I looked on my Mazda and I can't find them, but I'm not real positive what I'm looking for. There should be a dot or sometimes it's a little drill hole, real, real small indentation in the wheel that signifies where the wheel is its most out of round. And I believe you're supposed to line up the red dot with that mark. Again, I'm not as solid on the red mark as I am on the yellow. So Joe asked, hey, did you line up your yellow dot? And I did as best as I could. So if you see the yellow dot is here, this is the back of the tire. You can't obviously see where the, the end of the, uh, the valve stem is. <clears throat> but if you come around here, 
you can see that the valve stem's lined up here. So I was able to say, hey, the, the valve stem is about right in the middle of this portion here, so I got it pretty close. It's not perfect. And uh, I did that for, for all the tires. So yes, Joe, thank you. I did line them up. I just didn't point it out. Didn't think to point it out when I was doing the, uh, doing the video on mounting the tires. And they're not perfect, but they are close enough. There you go, your little uh, fat toy for the day. Got the spare tire cover here. Just going to untape it, get it in the car. Again, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on, on refreshing the cardboard one. I wasn't real sure how to do that properly without making it worse. Something that I, uh, I need to research. These are available. You can get new cardboard covers. Uh, one, you know, I, I'm trying to make everything original if, if the original part works. So I'm, I'm trying not to do that. And I'm not going to really see this thing. And I don't really you know, care all that much about it. All right, so that cleaned up all right. We'll get this mounted in the car and get the spare tire in there. Back, my arch nemesis is still here. The uh, didn't really show a whole lot because there's not really a whole lot to show with this. It's just me grunting and, and moaning and, and crying a little bit trying to get this thing aligned. So I'm going to continue to work on this for a little while. It's early. It's not 9 o'clock yet. And then if I get frustrated or get to the point where I want to throw something, I'm going to go and move on to the putting on the guts on the other door. Obviously, I took the door back off. I uh, decided to get the handle tightened down and cleaned up a little bit. And also have the new door locks here. So these make me a little nervous because I have a feeling I'm going to scratch some paint. But if you look at the construction of these, it's just a, just a key in the, in the barrel in there. And these are reproductions. They sell them like this in one shot. Like I showed you, I'm not sure if you can't get the barrel out very easily without, it, you know, it, you have to pop this rivet off. Or Anyway, so you can see these flares that are coming out here what they'll do is they're sprung and as you push it in they'll compress and then pop out when it gets in there and that's what prevents it from coming out there's also this little spring collar here and that fits around this groove in here and what's happening is the spring collar is not flat enough to sit flush in this groove all the way around and it's not letting me put the lock through so it's interfering with the uh, with the door going through and again I'm afraid to scratch paint I uh, scratched enough paint today so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put this in and then kind of cross my fingers that I'll be able to get this collar on once it gets inside the door when you put it in this little tab here goes in like this and then this will spin up and down and there's a little lever that's on that the locking mechanism the burst plate there and it just prevents you from locking it All right, so as often goes with this restoration, something doesn't go quite right, doesn't work out for me. So I take things apart, try and figure out how they work to better understand it so that I can hopefully make it correct. So the door is still kicking my butt pretty well, but I figured out how it all operates and locks and all that kind of stuff. So this is the burst plate that goes on the door itself. So when this is, the door is open, completely open and hanging free, the little catch that's in here which you'll see more of here in a second that would be in that position when you shut the door and it just catches but it still can wiggle like in the in the door jam and it's not shut shut that would kind of be in that position you can start to see that little ear come up and then when you shut it fully it would be like that and it's totally caught and catches the the burst plate that's on the car now I have I would show you that but I have them soaking but there's just a post on the car and that wraps around that post and now the door is shut. When I want to open the door, this lever right here is what interacts with the exterior door handle. So I would press the door handle in and it would come in and strike this plate and you can kind of see that wear mark on there and it just push in and when I do that, you can see that that fully rotates and would allow me to open the door, opens that up to allow me to open the door. When I'm in the car, door is completely shut when I'm in the car this piece here that rotates like that this is attached to the handle that's in the car and then the handle is attached right here 
and I pull and it makes it rotate down like this and then on this side this contacts that shiny piece right there and when you can roll that back you'll be able to see hear the click and that means that that push that all the way and when you shut the door obviously all that catches and engages like that so that's how you open it from the exterior and from the interior now when the door is shut again that's completely get this lined up in the camera that's completely shut when you want to lock the door this is the this is the lever that engages with the lock and then what you're going to see is this whole piece here is going to move down to lock the door All right that comes up and comes down like that now you can lock it from inside the car when you lock it from inside the car you push and pull on this piece here and you can lock it from outside the car and that's what this piece does here and engages with the lock so when you lock the car you watch this whole piece slide down and what it does is it then engages and blocks this lever here and that's the lever if you can see that's blocked and I can't open the car from the interior and I can't open it from the exterior those two are swapped so what's happening is when I'm putting this in this is not operating all that nice and free and the key is not able to easily turn that so it's all getting um, locked up and it's not yeah locked up it's all getting uh, gunked up in there and everything like that and of course you can't take this apart there's a bunch of springs in here and it's all riveted together so I'm just going to try to clean it up as best as I can and try to get it lubricated and get some more freedom of motion in here hopefully that makes sense lock is in um, unfortunately the little things in there you can see how much it rotates the little things in there don't really hold it tight and the little rubber piece that went in here wouldn't allow it to lock in at all and I did not have any rubber seals at least that I remember on Dorothy I probably did I mean it's it's not it's definitely not great there's got to be a better way to do that so I don't know if I can get a smaller or thinner rubber seal and cut my own or what I actually tore this one but it, it works you can see the door is locked now kind of hear it slide so it works but I don't like I don't like that another thing to point out here is you can see how messed up that piece is down there and how shaved off it is and that's just for years and years and years I guess of the door being low so who knows these doors probably have never fit but I can't even get the thing to open and shut without scratching the heck out of paint right now. So back to the drawing board and see if we can try it again. One step forward and 12 steps back. Decided to take the, the trim piece off of here, the vinyl. A couple reasons for that. One, the, uh, the cuts that I had put in it for the clips that hold the, the waist seal on were too deep. And you could see them all right here and it just looked horrible. Two... The adhesive that I use, this Super 77 stuff, never really cured, so it's still very tacky, and it just, the stuff wasn't drying, I guess, and it wasn't sticking real well, bubbling and everything like that, and I think I'm going to have problems uh, with the, with wherever I used it. If you remember, I redid the, the crash pads for the, the glove compartment rails, because that I just it was a horrible job and and this stuff is much better and for that I used the um, the 3M stuff here this weather strip adhesive that I picked up from Napa and then I also have this headliner adhesive that I used for the carpet so both of those are a better solution than th than this I'm not quite sure what's going on with that but whatever I'm going to redo this final piece and unfortunately I think that means that I'm going to have to take the door all apart again I don't I don't know I'm going to try to figure out how not to do that but I think uh, that, that I may have kind of screwed myself a little bit here, but I just can't look at all those tears and everything and then have it bubbling up and eventually it's just going to come apart on me anyway. Got the door trim done, got the window back in. I don't think it's going to really stick. You can also see here that I put the door card on. It's just sitting on there. I'm not going to try to put the door in with the card on, but the uh, transition right there I'm not too crazy about, but this one lined up pretty close. I'm not uh, real sure what goes on there, what's supposed to, if this is supposed to just trim in. I know that that stops, so I'll just, I'll figure something out. So I'm going to try to hang the door again and probably uh, not get too far with anything else. 
obviously not what I wanted to, to happen today. You can see here though the damage that I'm causing on that edge. Same uh, corresponding damage here. I got a little rub up here. So I'm trying to protect with tape as best I can, but it's not really uh, not really working too well. So I'm going to uh, step away for now, regroup, do some uh, do some research and, and stuff over the next several days, and see if I can come back with a new plan the next visit. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Now, as you know, things don't always go to plan. I've been pretty open about all the stuff that I keep messing up. And uh, door fitment has always been the bane of my existence along with the gaps. So the saga continues. Till next time, have a good weekend. Stay safe and stay healthy. Cheers.